It's certainly been a heated week in our nation's capital with no end in sight. House representatives cannot make a clear decision in their next speaker. Republican Party leader Kevin McCarthy has been gunning for the job, but he continues to fail to get the votes needed, even with a GOP majority in the House. Today, McCarthy lost the vote for the 12th time. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. And if we finish well, we'll be very successful. It is not happening. And as it's been said, we need to get to a point where we start evaluating what life after Kevin McCarthy looks like. And McCarthy was able to get closer today, flipping some of those holdouts. But this stall in Congress is really testing the patience of many lawmakers. It also continues to hold up important government business. But this day was also a somber anniversary at our nation's capital. Wendy? Yeah, that's right, Jameson. In fact, today marks two years since that very day. Lawmakers and many Americans will never forget January 6th, 2021, when rioters stormed the U.S. Capitol while lawmakers were still inside. This was all in an effort to protest the certification of the 2020 presidential election after former President Donald Donald Trump lost to President Joe Biden. And all new tonight at 6, ABC Action News reporter Mary O'Connell is hearing from both sides of the aisle, giving you a better picture of the political fallout we're still seeing today. January 6th, 2021. It's been two years since the attack on the U.S. Capitol. Jordi Zapata calls it unforgettable. Something that you learn in the history books, but that was unfolding like right before our eyes. Zapata is with the Hillsborough County Young Democrats. For some, January 6th highlighted the country's growing political divide, seen even still today. I asked if it's getting better or worse. He thinks Florida is different than some other states. We don't really like to see either side and this divisiveness drives a wedge between us and our neighbors and it's not productive. You know, we're about results here. I think that the conservatives, Republicans in this country are way past January 6th. I think the American people are way past January 6th. You go and ask anybody on the street and Give, give me your top 10 issues of today. It's not going to be anybody's top 10. Jake Hoffman is the executive director of the Tampa Bay Young Republicans. He thinks we're still very divided, but that there's plenty of places to find common ground. I've always said that if you have people sit down at a table and try and work out issues, even from all walks of life and different places, a lot of times they can find solutions to major issues within within a few hours to be honest our abc action news political analyst susan mcmanus tells me our country has clearly become more divided politically she said a lot of that is attributed to social media and she also pointed out how what we see is really consequential florida is the premier example is the large number of younger people who are turning their backs on both parties and saying, I don't like either one of them. They haven't done anything for me. And consequently, we now have a continued deterioration of people's confidence in our governing institutions. But McManus said the good news is people are aware of the problem. This last election cycle, when so many people predicted the demise of democracy, we had a pretty smoothly running election cycle all across the states, regardless of their politics and how divided they were. So we see signs of awareness. That's always a good step towards repair. In Tampa, Mary O'Connell, ABC Action News. So where does the January 6th investigation stand today? A House Select Committee was formed after the attack at the Capitol. Seven Democrats and two Republicans made up that group. Its goal was to investigate if any crimes occurred that day and if former President Donald Trump should be criminally responsible. The committee dug through piles of evidence, including pictures and videos from that day. They heard testimony from many witnesses, including some of President Trump's former colleagues, over the course of 17 months. Now, you may remember those hearings were televised, some of them during prime time. The final hearing wrapped up just a few weeks ago. Their final decision recommended criminal charges against Donald Trump. Now, that does not mean the former president will be charged. That decision is now in the hands of the Justice Department. Meanwhile, I wanted to go in depth on this tonight and look at the local people allegedly involved in the insurrection and where their cases stand today. And according to George Washington University, there are 100 people from Florida facing charges related to the Capitol riots and 29 individuals are from the Bay Area. And we begin with Adam Christian. 
He's known from Manatee County and he became known as the lectern guy as he was carrying around that lectern he took from Nancy Pelosi's office. Johnson pleaded guilty to one count of entering and remaining in a restricted building or grounds. He was sentenced to 75 days in jail, given 200 hours of community service and fined $5,000. Next is Jonathan Pollock, and he's from Polk County. He's accused of assaulting police officers on January 6th, but he's still a fugitive and wanted by the FBI. Now the FBI is offering $30,000 for any information that leads to his arrest and conviction. And finally, Jeremy Brown from Hillsborough County. He's accused of entering restricted areas of the U.S. Capitol grounds during the riots, but he has not gone to trial yet for that. He was recently on trial, though, for weapons charges after agents searched his home following his arrest. They found two hand grenades, an unregistered short barrel rifle and an unregistered sawed off shotgun. A federal jury convicted Brown and he will be sentenced in March. We've been following these cases since the very beginning and will continue to do so. To see our prior reports along with court documents, head to our website at abcactionnews.com. Oh,